Now, my friends, uh, those of you listening online this morning, the lesson this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Uh, this is a proclamation of the coming of light to the people of Israel that were languishing in exile. They were dark days indeed for the people of Israel. And this uh, scripture tells of the coming of the light, which mirrors also the star that hung over the manger at Bethlehem as a sign of God's light coming into the world in the, as the Christ child. Hear then the reading from Isaiah chapter 61 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And even though the darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. May God's blessing be added to God's holy word. Amen. Friends, it is so good to be with you. I'm preaching today at Colonial United Church of Christ, and this is the 2nd of January, the beginning of the new year, and it's so great to have you with us to be part of our online community this morning. Again, my name is Peter Lucky. I'm a United Church of Christ pastor and served many years at Plymouth Church in Lawrence, which is not very far from here in Prairie Village. So this morning we begin on the very first Sunday of the year 2022. It's just amazing to think that this is the year 2022, January 2nd, as we embark in the beginning of a new year. And I think of in many ways that this embarking on a new year is like going on a journey to a place, to a new land. It's like going someplace we've never gone before. And I know that your pastor loves all things Star Trek, and so I think about Captain Kirk, who would always begin every journey of the Starship Enterprise by saying that today we boldly go where no one has ever gone before. Indeed, how true that is. We are launching into this new year of 2022. None of us have been here before. This is all new as we embark on a journey. And when we think about the journey that we go on together for this new year, we cannot help but think about the journey that the Magi took 2,000 years ago when they saw a star hanging in the sky to the west. And from the east they came bearing their gifts and they went on this long journey to a distant land following the light, following the star. And they came and found the baby Jesus and they knelt down and worshiped him. And I have a painting, a beautiful painting by the famous Renaissance painter Jan Gassart, Gassart uh, which tells the story of the wise men coming and visiting the baby Jesus. So we are all on a journey, if you will, and I imagine and invite you to imagine yourself being with the wise man this morning, that we are on this journey we are all seeking the light. And I want to suggest this morning that, in fact, journey is the right way to think about our faith. That our faith is not something that is necessarily hard, fast, and certain all the time. But it really is a journey. It's a quest. And there were all at different places on this journey of faith. Some of us are newly wed, other of us are new parents, some of us are in a different place in our lives, some of us are living in retirement communities. We're all at different places. Some of us have been working, some of us are not working. We're all at different places on the journey. One of the places that I'm enjoying right now with my wife is being grandparents and having two adorable granddaughters, June and Violet, age eight and four. They've been spending the whole week with us after Christmas. And that's definitely a different place to be on the journey. As we tell our son and daughter-in-law, our job is not to discipline your children, but to spoil them. And we're doing that in a great, joyful way. So we're all on a journey, and it's a journey of faith. 
It's not doctrine chiseled in stone, but it's dynamic. Journey is really more a verb than a noun. And that is why we in the United Church of Christ like to say wherever you are on life's journey, because we recognize we're all at different places, you are welcome here. So think of this as a morning just to take time and to rest and think about where we are on this journey as we embark on this brand new year. And one thing about the journey is certain, and that is there's always going to be change. Always going to be change. The people, the ancient people of Israel, struggled with constant change in their life and their journey. The ancient Israelites took a journey through the wilderness to come to the promised land. They moved from slavery to freedom. Today's lesson is the journey of the people of Israel, the ancient people who were in exile, taken to Babylon, and tells of the promise of their journey to return home and to follow in the path of the light. Our lives today are filled with change. In fact, some of us feel that the change is overwhelming how we've all tried and had to struggle with the pandemic, with all of our lives being so uprooted, times in our lives when we travel plans had to be canceled, when our employment had to be changed and moved at home and to be virtual. It's just mind-boggling the amount of change that we have been through as a society and in the world today given the pandemic that we have been in. And what we have learned lately is the pandemic is far from over. And so we know this, that the change that we've had, there will be more change yet to come. There will be changes yet to come in 2022, and we don't know what they are, but surely there will be change. There will be mountain highs and valley lows and twists and turns and road bumps and blocks and barriers along the way. There's going to be moments we hope and pray of joy, but there may also be moments when we are plunged into the depths of agony. Moments when we wonder, like the wise men, if we have not lost our way. Moments where we're not sure where the next step is. Moments when we feel lost and maybe we feel aimless and confused and not quite sure where we are going, or even if there's any purpose to our journey. And yet we journey on. One of the ideas that I want to share with you this morning is the idea that in every journey, there is light as well as darkness. There's hope as well as despair. There's moments of feeling like we're home, but there's also moments of feeling like that we're lost and can't find our way. In the story, the ancient story of the wise men and their search for Jesus, they encounter Herod along the way. And Herod wanted to know where this king was being born so that he could come and he could bow down and worship him, which was a bold-faced lie because King Herod wanted to destroy Jesus, this new king of the Jews. In many ways, King Herod stands for the powers and principalities of the world, all that is evil and dark in the world. In many ways, we've experienced in a very visceral way this last year, that which is evil, that which is dark. We have struggled living in a world where there is so much acrimony and division, where people are so quick to be angry and to judge, where it seems as if forgiveness and kindness are in short supply, and it feels as if times that we are lost in a world of darkness. It feels as if the King Herods are still with us in this world today, even as we embark on this year 2022. And we wonder, can we still see the light? Can we still look for that star overhead? As the ancient texts remind us that our heart shall be filled with gladness and joy because the light shall shine among us. But sometimes we wonder, is there still 
light in this world or are we lost in valleys of darkness? And so the thought that I have, and I want to just close by saying with you, is that as we begin together this new year, know and trust, my friends, that we as people of faith are people that have always, always gathered in the promise and the hope of light. We are, and the reason for our journey is that we are followers and we are seekers of the light. And what I mean by light, I mean the goodness of this world, the light of God's love being revealed on us, the light that comes to us in Christ who came to live, that we might have life in his name. I want to suggest that we never, never give up, that we never despair on the journey, even at times when we feel so lost and life feels so aimless and the Herods around us feel so strong. We never, never give up on the light, even when we know that our lives are going to be filled with change and uncertainty and yes, even loss. But when we know that we can trust that God's light is always going to be with us and that light we can always be seeking in, then we have the confidence to say, like a Captain Kirk said, that we can boldly go where no one has ever gone before. And that's what this new journey is, is to boldly go where no one has ever gone before. And I want to close by a story about the light that came to me and was revealed to me just a couple of days ago in Lawrence. I was at the gas pump filling up my car with gasoline. It was that very windy Wednesday. Do you remember that terrible wind a couple weeks ago on Wednesday and some of the tractor trailers toppled on the interstate highways and the wind was tormenting me and I was pouring my gas into the gas tank and I just was such a hurry to get out of there. I was just anxious to get going and I just jumped in my car and I got down the road and I looked around and I couldn't find my credit card. I went to my pants pocket and I searched in my pants and I couldn't find my card. What did I do? Did I leave it back in the pump? Did it blow out and fall on the pavement? I, I was like, oh my gosh, now I got to cancel my card. Now I got to pay the fee. It just, I was just sort of despondent. I think, how could I have been so foolish to lose my credit card? I, why am I so forgetful? So I went back to the gas station, I go to the cashier, and I said, oh, i sorry, um, but has anybody by chance turned in a credit card? She looked in the drawer and said, nope, nobody's come by with a credit card that I've been in picked up. No sooner was I talking to the woman at the cashier, at the gas station, that a voice from behind me at the entrance of the gas station said, hey, I found somebody's credit card. I turned around and this 20-something gentleman was holding in his hand a piece of plastic. And the gentleman looked at me and he said, Peter Lucky, I know you. You're the pastor. You helped me. I was flabbergasted. The man that had found my credit card was somebody I'd helped years ago and remembered the time that he reached out and helped him. I saw this man and I wanted to hug him. His name was Eric and I wanted to hug him. So I reached for my wallet and take out some cash and I said, here, thank you. Take some cash as a reward. He said, nope, not necessary. And I took a 10 and I forced it into his hand. I said, you know, just take this and give it away. You know, my friends, that man on that day was the light. He reminded me a no, at a time when I was feeling desperate, when I was feeling afraid, and I was feeling kind of lost. He reminded me that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, on your journeys in your life, never give up following the light. In Christ's name we pray, amen.